Moblins are big, ugly, overworld monsters who've been part of the Legend of Zelda franchise from the beginning. While tough and strong, they're not known for being incredibly bright. They appear in 15 out of the currently existing 20 mainline games. They're only absent from Majora's Mask, Four Swords Adventures, Twilight Princess, Phantom Hourglass, and Spirit Tracks, making them one of, if not the most ubiquitous enemies you'll ever encounter. And over the years, they've evolved quite a bit. Belonging to the Blin species of monsters, they get their name from a portmanteau, blending the Japanese words Mori for forest, where they're typically found, and or Mori for spear, their traditional weapon of choice, and the Japanese word for goblin, in the first two games, they have an extra L in their name, calling them Moldlins. Although they're found primarily in forests and other wooded areas, they're realistically found just about everywhere. Caves, mountainous regions, and even dungeons. And throughout this series, they're found wielding swords, shields, clubs, bow and arrows, and different types of spears. In a pinch, they're also known to punch at length, slam their hands, kick, throw rocks, or even their smaller Bokoblin counterpart comrades, displaying a lack of care for the well-being of their fellow Ganon minions. Moblins usually form the front lines of the Demon King's army, still there are some exceptions as we'll see. In the 2D games, they're about the same size as any of the other overworld enemies and are easily disposed of more or less, but in the 3D games they're significantly more significant than most other monsters and have more HP. For the purposes of this video, I should explain we're going through in chronological order of the way the games were released, not the way they show up on the Zelda timeline. So with that said, let's take a look through each game and examine the evolution of the Moblin. In the manual for the original game, these monsters are described as bulldog-like goblins living in the forest and slightly meaner than Octoroks. These anthropomorphic bulldogs seem to walk on two legs, but they're also depicted as crouching creatures coming in red and blue colors. Blue being the stronger of the two, but they each attack the same way, by throwing spears at Link, which are easily blocked with any shield. When defeated, both had a chance to drop a heart or a rupee, while the red ones may also drop a fairy, and the blue ones could possibly drop four bombs or a clock. This is also the only Zelda game in which you have a chance to run into friendly moblins hiding in caves across the overworld. That'll give Link rupees and remind you that it's a secret to everybody. Well, good thing he's talking to Link, you know, because he doesn't say much, but I digress. In the second game of this series, Zelda II The Adventure of Link, a direct sequel to the original, the owner's manual description still refers to them as Moblins, calling them little devils that live mainly in the forest who attack Link by throwing spears and moving slowly. I should also mention the manual's artwork in which they carry the exact same spear as they did in the original game, with a twisted grip tape and skull at the base of the handle, but their spiky armor and accessories have changed, now including nipple spikes on their upper body armor. Why? I don't know. Why not? They clearly stand taller on their hind legs and look even more like bulldogs in the face than in the original, with more human-like bodies. And in addition to red and blue, the orange moblin was added. This is the only game where we see orange moblins. For each color, weaker moblins charge at Link with their spear, while the more powerful ones can throw their spears like they did in the first game. And in general, they're definitely stronger in this title. Red moblins went from a health of 2 in the original to a health of 12 in The Adventure of Link, while blue moblins went from a health of 3 up to 18, so they take significantly more hits to take down. That brings us to the third game of the franchise, A Link to the Past. This game has a light world and a dark world, and moblins only appear in the dark world. They've evolved to look clearly more like pigs or boars than bulldogs like in the first two games, and you can see tusks on either side of the snout. They also now have a trident spear they can throw from all the way across the screen, and they move faster than in the last game. There's also no color differentiation, just a single type of moblin, and while this game was made at a time while owner's manuals were still being included with the cartridge in the box, the bestiary at the end of the booklet is brief and does not include moblins along with the other stronger adversaries. 
they're still not that strong and the spears they throw are still easily blocked, but the damage they inflict could be up to two hearts at a time. They do however hang out with stronger enemies than they did in the first couple games, like Taros and Hinox, rather than the more grunt-like bad guys. Moving on to Link's Awakening, the fourth game of the franchise, and the first to not take place in Hyrule, but rather in Link's mind during a dream or nightmare. In here we have two distinct types of moblins, whereas throughout the previous three games they either looked like bulldogs or like boars, now we have bulldog looking moblins coexisting with boar looking moblin relatives known as pig warriors or boarblins. They function exactly the same, both taking two hits, and both found around the overworld, usually wielding spears, but sometimes a sword and a shield. And in the 2019 remake, the blue bulldog moblins have taken on more of a porcine appearance, especially in the snout. It's easiest to distinguish between these two while playing the 2019 Nintendo Switch Remake version of Link's Awakening, but you can also make this distinction on Link's Awakening DX. However, in the original, everything is black and white because it was released on the Game Boy, so there were no variants of individual Moblin types like red or blue. And since these two different Moblin types look so similar, they could easily have been confused back in the day as the same enemy but in different colors. Then we have, aside from the friendly Moblins in the original game, the first special or significant Moblin, known as the Moblin Chief or King Moblin. He's a big, red, hulking, dopey looking guy with two horns on his head, making him look like a stereotypical devil. And he's responsible for the kidnapping of Madame Meow Meow's pet Bow Wow or Chain Chomp Dog, holding him hostage inside the Moblin Cave. He throws things, beats his chest, jumps around, and charges at Link, trying to impale him with his horns. And this, by the way, is the only game we encounter the Chief Moblin. Once he's defeated, he's gone forever. At least for now. Continuing on to Ocarina of Time takes us to the first 3D game of this series, where Moblins are significantly more gigantic and move super fast and aggressively. Ocarina of Time really gave us one of the most dramatic changes in their appearance up to that point in time, while staying true to the original design. They have spiky shoulder pads and helmets, perhaps a callback to the artwork for the original two games, especially Zelda 2. And in this title, they've gone back to looking like the original dog head aesthetic. They don't throw anything, but they do charge with their spears and will knock Link around like he's nothing. So they must be snuck around using stealth. And although they can be defeated with weapons like your sword or bombs, the hook shot is especially effective, which is funny because it's usually used just to stun enemies in this game. This is also the second game in a row to have a leader type Moblin, the much bigger and stronger Club Moblin, which doesn't charge, just stays planted in the same spot, but his club slams will throw a shockwave of dirt, making for quite the intimidating impression. And they're only seen guarding the Forest Temple, unless you're playing Master Quest where another Club Moblin does appear in the Spirit Temple. The next game in the series was Majora's Mask, which takes place in Termina rather than in Hyrule, and so this marks the first entry of the series where Moblins do not appear. We see them again in the next two entries of the series, the Oracle games, Seasons and Ages. Interestingly though, these two games do not take place in Hyrule either. Anyway, Moblins act identically between the two Oracle games, with some differences in how they're found, and they look identical to the way that we saw them in Link's Awakening, having both the regular Moblin Bulldog style and the Pig Warrior or Boar Blend varieties. But in the Oracle games, they now come in a variety of colors, back to the original red and blue. Red, as usual, is the weaker and more common, but now they can also be found throwing boomerangs at Link in some dungeons. In addition to red and blue, this game shows the first time Moblins evolved to a gold color, when we find a golden Moblin after speaking to the old man wearing a golden robe out in the woods of winter during the autumn season. We also see a green Moblin in this game picking on our friends Moosh and Dimitri with his red cronies. And besides the Moblin Chief that we already talked about, this is the first typical Moblin that's able to speak Hylian. Link can also transform into a green Moblin if he puts on the Moblin Ring. 
And as if all that wasn't enough, one of the dungeons in these games is the Molin's Keep, which must be destroyed in Oracle of Ages to complete the game, although it's not necessary in Seasons. To do this, you must face off with and defeat the Great Moblin, also known as Big Pig, a gluttonous looking strong dude wearing a purple robe, a gold and red ruby encrusted crown, and eating a giant drumstick as depicted in the owner's manual. And to date, the Oracle games mark the final time we've seen the bulldog style Moblins used in the Zelda series. The next game brings us back to Hyrule in Four Swords. There's technically two types of Moblin in this game, although they look identical, both being closer to the Borblin style appearance. Now with green armor and apparently wearing blue jeans. They're different in that they carry different weapons and are named as such. There's a bow Moblin and a spear Moblin. So instead of having one type of monster that can throw spears at you, the bow Moblin can fire from range and the spear Moblin will charge at length for the attack. They do not come in any extra color variations, and that is the first time we see them classified specifically as bow or spear moblins, even though they've had plenty of spear wielding moblins throughout the series so far. Moving on to the Wind Waker, here we also only see one type of moblin, a dark blue, clearly porcine styled face and bodied monstrosity. Its upper body is hulking and massive compared to its legs. They definitely skip leg day and they have a swirl type design on their shoulders and arms. And their hat looks like little birthday party hats you'd see at kids birthday parties. They also wear skull necklaces, which you can pull off and collect using the grappling hook, but they are found wearing two styles of pants, which acts the same as in previous games to pull different body colors. They all carry spears, but as opposed to just charging with or throwing them like in previous games, these moblins can spin or swing them, and if they're wearing orange pants, that's their only weapon. But if they wear blue pants, they also carry a lantern and they'll throw it to try and light Link on fire, which is a new move for sure. So blue is obviously more powerful, but it is interesting to see the use of orange instead of red for the weaker variety, sort of a callback to Zelda 2. We find them in great numbers compared to previous games as well, guarding key areas like the Forsaken Fortress and Hyrule Castle. They're sometimes carried and dropped into battle by the giant Kargarok enemies, and this is the first game where Link's attacks can cause them to drop their spears and give you a chance to pick them up. If you do disarm them, they'll start punching at Link until he gets the spear back or dies, and if struck from the rear, they let out a cry and jump around in pain holding their butts. And while they're not particularly intelligent, they are smart enough to know to get out of there if they see Link take out a bomb. Anyway, the next game in the franchise was Four Swords Adventures, which does not feature Moblins at all. And so moving on to the game after that, the Minish Cap is where we re-encounter them. This marks the return of the Spear Moblin and the Bow Moblin, exactly like the ones we saw in Four Swords. These Moblins are identical. Although we do see some Blue Moblins in the Dark Hyrule Castle, but this is merely an aesthetic change influenced by the location because unlike with all other different colored monsters throughout the other games, these blue moblins are no stronger or more powerful than their regular counterparts. Although it's interesting to note, these guys are basically a 2D version of the moblins we saw in The Wind Waker, marking a noticeable evolution carryover from what we saw during the time of the Great Flood. Moblins are then absent from the next three consecutive games, Twilight Princess, Phantom Hourglass, and Spirit Tracks, not returning again until Skyward Sword, the most extended break in their existence to date. About seven years since we last saw them in the Minish Cap, more than double the amount of time they've ever been gone without an appearance in the past. Fittingly then, Skyward Sword features a new type of Moblin called the Shield Moblin, which comes in two varieties carrying a wooden or a metal shield. The metal shields being heavier suggests these are the stronger of the two, which they are, but they only come in one color, a reddish kind of sunburnt looking complexion. But again, they dress differently. All Moblins wear boots in this game, and the wooden shield Moblins wear a yellow or golden covering around their neck with yellow or golden pasties. While the metal shield moblins wear an armored helmet and metallic colored covering around their neck and pasties.
these guys are more obese rather than hulking and muscular and cut. What it really looks like when you spend too much time thinking about it the way I have while scripting this video is that the moblins from Ocarina of Time let themselves go and need to get back into shape. Moblins return again in A Link Between Worlds, which is known to be a spiritual sequel to A Link to the Past. No surprise then how similar they are to how we found them in that game. For example, in A Link to the Past, Moblins are only seen in the Dark World, whereas now we only find them in Low Rule. And while of course the graphics are greatly improved in A Link Between Worlds, we can see the resemblance. Obviously a pig-styled moblin wearing purple, and still with the trident-style spear. But wait, there's more. Let's not forget about the Borblins from Link's Awakening, specifically on the Nintendo Switch where these guys were identical in face and body shape to what we see in A Link Between Worlds. They were just dressed differently, wearing a vest instead of a t-shirt or a v-neck. And now they're specifically called Moblins, so whether or not they were different creatures in the past, they have evolved into one. Then there's the return of the Shield Moblins, which look nothing like they did in Skyward Sword, and who are more heavily armored than the typical Spear Moblin. They can carry a spear or a machete. If you look closely, there's a difference in their loincloth coloring. Red always has the spear, and blue always has the sword or machete style. So it's similar to how the Moblins in the Wind Waker would have different colored clothing rather than skin colors. Then in Triforce Heroes, we get the exact same style Moblin, no evolution at all. In fact, we only have the Spear Moblin. No more sword or shield carrying Moblins in this game. Although we do see a dark variant of the Spear Moblin inside the Den of Trials. And they throw a shadowy spear which if it hits Link will jinx him or curse him and he won't be able to use his sword. Just the way they do in A Link Between Worlds, the standard Moblins try to keep a distance and get better aim for their spear throws, and have learned how to ride atop totem Armos enemies, which you can only fight by forming a totem yourself, marking a notable increase in their intelligence. And now, as of the making of this video, that takes us to the modern era of Zelda. Starting with Breath of the Wild, Moblins have undergone a dramatic change. They're taller and muscular, but somewhat lanky and scrappier. They have a blend in the face of both canine and porcine features, having a longer snout like a dog, but with a flattened end like a pig's. And they have dog-like feet rather than cloven hooves, but only two toenails, which strongly resemble hooves. They fashion their own type of weaponry, bringing back the Moblin Club for the first time since Ocarina of Time, and of course the Moblin Spears, but they can also be found carrying swords, shields, and bows and arrows. And when completely empty-handed, we'll see them dig up rocks to throw or pick up a Bokoblin to hurl at you. When defeated, they can drop Moblin Fangs, Horns, and Guts. We also see the most variety in this game with the classic red and blue moblins, plus now the never before seen black and silver moblins, and the return of gold moblins, which are only found while playing in master mode. Not only that, but there's always a chance of running into Stal moblins during the nighttime, a variation of Stalfos in moblin form like we've never seen before. Not to mention the Cursed Moblins, which are decapitated Moblin Skulls given life through malice, floating around and chasing after Link, usually in the Divine Beast dungeons or at Hyrule Castle. The biggest difference Moblins have evolved between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is the spike horn on top of their head. We see in Tears this horn is different on each of the Moblins. The red have a bulbous, helmet-shaped kind of horn. The blue guys look somewhat like bulls. Black Moblins have a pinecone-type horn. And the silvers have a lopsided, spirally-type shape. And they're otherwise visually identical. They also have a new move when empty-handed they might slam their head on the ground to try and crush you with this horn. Although there are no longer any gold moblins, nor are there any cursed moblins, because there's no more malice for them to spawn from. So in this regard, moblins have taken one step forward, two steps back as far as evolution goes between the end of the calamity and the onset of the upheaval. 
And that's what we know about the existence of Moblins and the evolution they've gone through during the almost 40 years they've been a part of the world of Hyrule. Thank you for watching this goofy little documentary. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like the video on your way out if you made it this far. It helps support the channel so much more than you know. And subscribe to catch the next video when it drops. I'll be back as soon as I can with more content. And until then, stay cool and always keep punching out there. Aloha.